big shout out to to the to, to all of the ladies in women's basketball. Um, I'm glad NCAA fixed their mistake. Um, we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. The just the differences between the workout facilities of the men's and 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 the women uh, players. So you know they have uh, no choice but to fix that. So, don't give them credit. Don't give them any credit. They don't deserve any credit. Well, no, no, I'm not giving them credit. I'm just saying I'm glad they got the act together. Well, that's not even no. That that's a band aid on a huge mistake that they consciously made. The NCAA needs to take a lot more ownership for the ridiculous nonsense that they are pulling. I mean, even the the disparity in the budgets between the two, the final four logo being used for the men and not for the women. Like this is ridiculous. You need as the NCAA who has been so behind the times, you need to step into the forefront and be on the right side of this. Instead, you continuously choose to make poor decisions and just stand back and go, mm, oh, well, look, we fixed the gym. Let's pat ourselves on the back. No, I'm sorry. No, that's not how this is going to work. And just like you were talking about, Knicks fans, like who are continuing to buy the tickets and the merchandise. Well, more needs to happen as far as the NCAA is concerned because this is ridiculous. It's, so do, it's, do you do you do you put the pressure on the fans then? Because the fans are still supporting college basketball despite the fact that there are huge disparities. Do we can we put the pressure on the fans there? Well, I'd like to. Different. It's I know I'm, I mean tough, I guess, now you're talking about parents, not yeah, parents again. And, and, and that's, that's, that's tough. Exactly. And the, this is this is the whole point. They're not paid. I mean, technically, that's, you know, we're in the midst of all of that right now, but they're not paid athletes. These are college kids, right? And so you have other college kids, you have family members supporting them. This is why I this is why the pressure needs to come from and and it's going to as things start to change with the league and everything and the NCAA is going to start to feel the pressure in a lot of different directions. And they if if I were part of this organization, I would be like, we need to get ahead of this. We need to step so, up into this because it's going to come barreling at them. You know, I always live like 10 to 20 to 100 years in the future, right? I have that problem. So now let's say we push for this equality and this equality and this equity happens, right? You also have to throw in the mix. And I know this is going to sound crazy and outside of the sandbox, but it's still in the playground if you're with me. You also have to throw in the mix transgender. Now, when transgender comes in and we have transgender athletes, they're not going to have a side to fall on necessarily, right? Do we have a blend that happens between male and female sports? Is that in our near future, a blend? Because the argument here is now that the women should be getting the same amounts of recognition, um, support, uh, just everything, right? And they should be getting equal amounts. And so who's to stop someone from saying if they want equal, they should be able to compete equally, right? And so who's to stop them from saying, have them compete, have the men compete with the women and the women compete with the men. And then we'll get true equality. Are we headed there? Because I truly don't feel like we can achieve equality if we always have that separation in the first place. We're always going to have that disparity. It's, it's, it's rough though, just because of the, the physicality of it and you know the physical differences between a man and a woman to say that with, with, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, I know in, in tennis, we have mixed doubles. So there are certain things um, where, where we've seen that before it on the, on the pro level, but I mean, basketball. It's, it's, it's tough. Right. And then, and then what happens is when you get into that part of it and you say, you know, the physicality of it, then easily that diminishes, your, not diminishes, but it weakens your argument that women should get equal because you're immediately saying, and if, hold on, and if, I'm not saying I agree, I'm just saying for argument's sake, right? If you're going to say that women are not physically up to the task of competing with men, then someone is easily gonna swoop in and say, then why should we pay them the same amount? That's dangerous to say, which is why I never say that. I never say that oh. women shouldn't compete because I know on the back side of that, you can use that same argument to justify why they don't get paid the same. That's why I don't so, like that argument. So I think, like you said, you're you're jumping too far ahead. I think right now what I'm what we need to be more concerned about is I'm not necessarily saying the budgets have to be equal. I think they can be somewhat reflective of, of what they're generating, but I think it is important for people and and it's happening. And Kobe was leading the way with this, unfortunately, you know, you know that right. happened but but right. there are a lot of guys stepping up in his place in the league who are wearing 
WNBA jerseys and t-shirts and who are also shouting out the college and like LeBron is watching the games and tweeting about them and, and the calls with the refs and all of these things. So I think we're, it, we're trending in the right direction, right? We're shining that we're taking the people in who do have the followers and, and do, who do have the following to shine the spotlight on these women who are balling. Right. And so like, I think we're, we're taking the steps in the right direction. I think what I'm just saying is like some, an organization like the NCAA needs to get with the times a little bit more. And I'm not even talking about actual dollars right now. Like I I don't want to break down into budgets and things like that. I'm just saying overall, I think we're trending in the right direction. We need to keep that momentum moving and we need to put pressure on, on organizations like the NCAA who clearly are not with it. So, and I applaud all of the, all of the men um, in the WNBA, or excuse me, NBA who are showing love to WNBA and the, and the women who are speaking up. I mean, they've done more for social justice in their past season than like, than MLB and everybody else. So it's like, we have to, we have to give them their flowers too. And, and, and give them the respect that they have worked double to earn. So I, I, so I do think you're jumping ahead and I, I mean, that's a whole nother show we could talk about, but yeah. you know, that that's just, and that could be very well happening in the future. Who knows that, who knows that could start, that could spawn a whole new league for, for guys and girls who do want to d- compete against each other. Cause I'm sure there are some women who feel that they could, and they probably could. I've seen them. Men. Right. I've seen them. So, so that's like a whole, that's like future, future. I'm just saying baby steps because you know, I feel like change happens gradually and slowly, but we also have to push for it. And so, you know, that's- keep, we have to keep checking the NCAA. Yeah. I mean, we we should constantly be checking them just to make sure. But you know, especially during times like these, or even going back to the, the whole Rich Paul rule and all of that stuff, we have to continue to check the NCAA whenever we see the blatant, you know, disrespect. And, and things that go on with, within the NCAA, we have to keep continue to check them. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh.